Number 29. Write the molecular and empirical formulas of the following compounds. Then we got A through D, so I'm just going to write A, B, C, and we'll stick D over here. Okay. So before we get started, we have to first know the difference between what a molecular formula is and an empirical formula. So I'm just going to write MF over here for a molecular formula, and then we'll compare it with the empirical formula. So a molecular formula is the formula that you see. The formula that you see in, I'll put in compound. So it's going to be whatever compound they give you, find out that formula, do not touch it. That's always the molecular formula, all right? However, the empirical formula, which I will put over here, EF, the empirical formula is always the most simplified, simplified formula formula from compound. So this one is when you're going to look at your molecular formula, the formula that they gave you, and you're going to say to yourself, can I simplify it? And you can only simplify, I'm going to say here, simplify subscripts. So we should know what subscripts are, right? If I say that I have two O2s, right? I have two oxygen molecules. The oxygen molecule is O2. The two on the bottom is classified as a subscript. The two in the front is not classified as a subscript. This is called a coefficient. And yes, this will come in way handy in a couple of chapters from now. So get into the habit of knowing the difference between coefficients and subscripts. Subscripts are the little, the little guys at the bottom. All right. So how will you simplify your subscripts with your empirical formula? It's always through division. All right. So you'll always think of, can I divide these two numbers to get even a more lower whole number? And we always talk about whole numbers. We never do decimals. All right. So let's try it out. Now, before we get into this, I'm just going to say that molecular and empirical formulas and knowing the difference between them, super important for your, you know, your specialized exams, especially the MCAT. All right. So if you guys are taking the MCAT and definitely let me know on the bottom, if you are, you know, in the, in the comments, um, definitely like star this, you guys should know empirical and molecular formulas inside and out. All right, so I'm just going to rewrite letter A. So we got O, which is double bound to a C, which is double bound to an O. And now I'm just going to label them with uh, my highlighter. So I have one carbon here, and then it looks like I have two oxygens, right? I have an oxygen here and an oxygen here. So I'm just going to say molecular formula would be the formula that they give me. So I'm going to say I have C, a carbon, and then I have oxygen. How many carbons do I have? I have one. How many oxygens do I have? I have two. Now, when you have one of something, you don't say one, right? It's assumed that we have one. So instead, you can just say CO2. That's it. Now, that's the formula that they gave you. Box that answer off. That's the molecular formula. Now, to know your empirical formula, you look at your molecular formula and you look at your subscripts. So now I'm going to just rewrite the one here just to show you guys. So there's one and two. Is there any number that you can divide by those two numbers to get it even more simplified? No, right? One and two, you can't do anything about that. And I want to put it up here. Let's, let's put this rule in place. If you have a one for a molecular formula, if you have a one as a subscript, subscript, that will automatically be your empirical formula. If you know that you have a one in any element of your molecular formula, it will be your empirical formula because you can never, 
you know, simplify that down even more. So your molecular formula would be CO2, but also your empirical formula would be CO2. And box that answer off. There you go. A is done. B, H single bound to C, triple bound to C, single bound to H. Let's see. Looks like I got two carbons and two hydrogens. So the molecular formula is what they give me. So I have two carbons and I have two hydrogens. And all the amounts will go as subscripts. They will not go as coefficients. So box that answer off. That's your molecular formula. Empirical formula. Can I simplify my numbers? I have a 2 and a 2. Can I simplify these numbers even more by division? Yeah, I can divide both of them by 2, right? If I divide this by 2, and if I divide this by 2, I get 1, right? So I just want to, just so, to not get confused, I'll just put it over here. C2H2. I can divide each one by 2. And then it would turn into C... 1, H, 1, but we don't really write the 1s, they're implied, so I'm just going to say C, H, and box that answer off. That's your empirical formula for B. So this one is done. Next, we got an H, single bond to C, like that, double bound, C, H, and H. Okay, let's see. How many carbons? Two, right? One here, one here. How many hydrogens? One, two, three, four. So sum that up. Your molecular formula is the formula that's given. So it'd be C2H4. Now, does it really matter if you put the four in the front? Like if you put H4C2? Not really. For right now, it shouldn't matter. But just know that always the central elements are always, are generally. 98% of the time stated first, and then you kind of branch off from there. Can we divide and simplify this formula? So this would be the molecular formula box that answer off. I'm just going to put the empirical formula over here. Yeah, I have two, and I have a four. I can each divide these by two, right? C2H4, I can divide this by two and this by two. So my empirical formula would be C H2. And box that answer off. That's your empirical formula for C. Last but not least, D. S O H O H oxygen and oxygen. Okay. So what do we got? We got one sulfur in the middle surrounded by one, two, three, four oxygens. And then I have two hydrogens. So let's see. I have one sulfur. I'm going to start in the middle and then branch off. But technically, it doesn't really matter. So I have one sulfur. I could put the one there, but it's implied that there's one. Then I have four oxygens. One, two, three, and four. So O4. And then H2. Right? There's two hydrogens. One, two. Now, just know that this can get rearranged by an acid. It doesn't matter whether you put, you know, the H in the, in the back or the front. I'm just going to put them in the front just to kind of give you, um, like, different ways of writing it. So this would be H2SO4, and this would be the molecular formula. It's the formula that they gave you. Now, you tell me, empirical formula, what do you think? You have two hydrogen, one sulfur, and four oxygen. But what did we say? If you have one for a subscript for a molecular formula, it's automatically the empirical formula. It's the most simplified. So this would be exactly the same. So the molecular formula would equal the empirical formula. And box that one off. That's the answer for D. All right, guys. This one was fun. Remember to know your differences between molecular and empirical formulas. Keep studying hard. You're doing a great job. I'll see you guys in number 30. See you then.